The 4-H clubs of Polk County, as part of their cultural heritage project, are presenting an all-county 4-H play. Young people from the entire county are taking part in the production Spoon River Anthology, which will be presented next Saturday night at the Turtle Lake High School. WIXK Cares this week turns the program over to cultural heritage leader Paulette Augustine and Polk County 4-H members to give a sample of the color and tone of their production, Spoon River Anthology. For people in Polk County, the name Paulette Augustine means a lot for 4-H and for cultural arts, and Paulette is in the middle of another project right now, a countywide play, Spoon River Anthology. Paulette, could you tell us just a little bit of background about this project, where it got started and where you're going? Cultural Heritage is the name of the project. It's on a grant program from the University of Wisconsin, and it's mainly um, getting the kids involved in appreciation for their past and their communities and their families. Now, I felt that this play, Spoon River Anthology by Edgar Lee Masters, was a good example of what um, a family and a community might be like in the time of Edgar Lee Masters. This is why I chose it. Um, what he did was Edgar Lee Masters went into a graveyard and he looked at the gravestones at the graveyard and he said, if I wrote a play and I had to tell all these people to come back to life and tell the folks in the audience what their lives were like and what mistakes they made, uh, what would they say? So he started out with names like Eleanor Jones and Roscoe Adams and he gave each of these people a character that they had in their lives and this is what my cast members do. Um, they, each time they get up to speak, are a different person. So one time they might be an old man, and the next time they'd have to be a 20-year-old boy who just went to war. So this is the hardest play they can ever do in their lives, I'm sure. And we've had a lot of fun. We're incorporating 10 cities with cast members, and I think about 15 cities all total with crew and cast. Um, we expect that the audience will enjoy it from the fact that it's something they all can identify with. Anything in your life, you can identify with these cast members. When is the play going to be held? The play is a one-night performance only, January 5th, which is a Saturday, 8 o'clock at the Turtle Lake High School Auditorium. All of the proceeds uh, from the ticket sales will be going to the daycare center at Wandrews for the mentally handicapped. Um, we feel the kids voted on this and they decided that this was the charity they wanted the money to go to. Um, we feel that if for no other reason, it's a good um, way for you to spend an evening and it's a good way for you to spend a dollar and 50 cents. Would you like to give us just a sampling of some of the readings that are going to be uh, within the play Spoon River Anthology? All right, um, as I mentioned, all of the characters that my cast will be doing are different. They never have the same character twice. So we'll just start and we'll, um, I'll introduce you first to Curtis Petzl. He's from St. Croix Falls and um, you have to keep in mind that the cast and crew, I don't think any of them are over 17. So keep in mind that these are very mature parts that they're doing. So Curtis, the first person you're going to be doing would be um, Eugene Carmen, is that right? Okay, now why don't you just go ahead and give us a sample of what he might sound like. Road slaves, selling shoes and gingham, flour and bacon, overalls, clothing, shoes all day long. 
for 14 hours a day for 313 days for more than 20 years, saying yes, um, and yes sir, and thank you. A thousand times a day and all for $50 a month, living in this stinking room in the Rattle Trap commercial, and compelled to go to Sunday school to listen to the Reverend Abner Pete 104 times a year, for more than an hour at a time, because Thomas Rhodes ran the church, as well as the store in the bank. So while I was tying my necktie that morning, I suddenly saw myself in the glass, my hair all gray, my face like a sodden pie. So I cursed and cursed, you damned old thing, you cowardly dog, you rotten popper, you rolled slave. Till Roger Bogam thought I was having a fight with someone <coughs> and looked through the transom just in time <coughs> to see me fall on the floor <coughs> from a broken vein in my head. Okay, the next cast member you'll be hearing from is Gail Bile. She is also representing the St. Croix Falls area. Gail, are you going to show us a little bit about uh, Hortense Robbins? All right, go ahead. My name is to be in the papers daily of having dined somewhere or traveled somewhere or rented a house in Paris where I entertained the nobility. I was forever eating or traveling or taking the care at Baden-Baden. Now I am here to do honor to Spoon River, here beside the family whence I sprang. No one cares now where I dined, or lived, or whom I entertained, or how often I took the cure at Baden-Baden. Sherry Munson is one of our cast members from the Amory area, and she is also our lead folk singer. Um, I would like to let you know a little bit of her voice now as she and Paul Scott do The Water is Wide. Sherry, you have a few interesting parts in the play, and in one of them you play uh, a lost and forgotten older lady, don't you? Could you give us a sample of her? Your red blossoms amid green leaves are drooping beautiful geranium, but you do not ask for water. You cannot speak. You do not need to speak. Everyone knows you are dying of thirst, yet they bring you no water. They pass on, saying the geranium wants water. And I who had happiness to share and longed to share your happiness, and I who loved you, Spoon River, and craved your love, wither before your eyes, Spoon River, thirsting, thirsting, voiceless from the chasteness of soul to ask you for love. And those who saw and knew me perished like this geranium which someone has planted over me and left to die. I have two student directors helping me with this production. Um, one of them is Brian Fogner, and the other one is Ross Elwood, and they're both from the Amory area. Um, I think this is a great opportunity for all of my crew and my cast to learn a little bit about what goes into a production. For most of the people in my crew and cast, this is the very first time they have ever been in any kind of a play or performance before. So I'm really proud of the work that they've been doing. The last person you'll hear from is Paul Scott. He's from the Clear Lake area. And he's no newcomer to music. Um, Paul is going to give us um, one of his parts. Suppose you stood just five feet two and had worked your way as a grocery clerk studying by candlelight until you became an attorney at law. And then suppose through your diligence and regular church attendance, you became attorney for Thomas Rhodes, collecting notes and mortgages, and representing all the widows in the probate court. And through it all, they jeered at your size and laughed at your clothes and your polished boots. And then suppose you became the county judge, and Jefferson Howard and Kinsey Keene and 
Harmon Whitney and all the giants who had sneered at you were forced to stand before the bar and say, Your Honor. Well, don't you think it was natural that I made it hard for them? A few other of the cast members that are here with me today um, will be representing different cities. From the Frederick area, we have Donald Knaber and Liddell Larson. From the Luck area, we have Danette Morton. From the Clayton area, we have Jean Radabaugh and Mary Jo Weber. We have people on the crew handling publicity, ticket sales, costumes and props, and makeup. And right now for ticket sales, we hope to have all advanced tickets. Um, since there are only 400, I might advise that you would contact a local 4-H club to receive your tickets before the night of the performance. And this way you won't have to wait and see if you get a place in our auditorium or not. The last thing we'd like to do for you is to sing you one of the most important songs in the play, something that shows a little bit about life and about what every person strives for, and the song is called Freedom. Thank you very much, Paulette. As long as we have a couple minutes left in the program, I wish you could tell us a little bit more about the Cultural Heritage Project in Polk County. I know people who attended the county fair saw some of your work there, and I'm sure there are many other things going on behind the scenes. Out of all the 4-H clubs in Polk County, I personally visit clubs every month, and I can only do a few at a time. And so far, we're proud to say that we have about 17 clubs represented in the project with every club having a project leader and at least one junior leader interested in the project. At last count, we had over 60 members in the project, which makes it one of the most enrolled in projects so far that I've found in the county. Um, we have marvelous cooperation from the state and from our, our local county agent and 4-H agents. Um, the parents have come through like a million dollars with this. Um, they gradually get working on it with the members and they find that this is really not history, but it's something more interesting than history. It's family heritage and where you came from and what your ancestors did before they came to this country and what place we have in life. Some of the programs we have coming in the future will be again our county fair, which we're really proud of. And then we have uh, a resource day which is coming up in July. Uh, that is taken part by oh, a lot of people last year. And hopefully this program will be carried um, on in future counties such as Barron and Burnett and St. Croix County. So um, it's a good program. If kids are interested in it, most certainly join it. It's very fulfilling and rewarding. And I hope that you can come out and see our play on the 5th of January. It's going to be a good one. Once again, where is it and where can people get tickets? Turtle Lake High School Auditorium, January 5th on Saturday, 8 o'clock in the evening. Contact either your local Polk County 4-H clubs or call the Extension Office and we'll get tickets out to you as quickly as we can. Mm -hmm. 